Oh, now this is ridiculous. Marshall, your apartment's crooked. What do you mean? <laughs> this camera angle can be found all over the place. Not just in movies, but in TV shows and commercials as well. It's called the Dutch Angle, and it has been used steadily since the 1920s. Its intended purpose is to stir emotion in the audience. So while you may not have noticed, it probably made you feel a little uneasy. But the questions remain, why are so many filmmakers still using a 100-year-old camera trick? Where exactly did it come from? And why, after all these years, is it so effective? It's an incredible story. I'm gonna tell you the whole thing. Before we really jump into the details of the Dutch angle, we need to get a grip on the basics. And there's no better way to do that than with a solid example. Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards makes frequent use of the Dutch angle, though it is most prominently featured in this iconic scene. Sergeant Donnie Donowitz, the bear Jew. While a majority of the camera work is done straight on at eye or ground level, the angle is noticeably shifted after Donnie emerges from the tunnel and speaks with a German soldier on the ground in front of him. This tilt on the X or roll axis is what constitutes a Dutch angle. The camera works in tandem with the rest of the film's language to tell the audience how we're supposed to feel, what we're supposed to think, and what we can expect moving forward. Since we suddenly find ourselves off balance, we have to struggle to emotionally right ourselves, but Tarantino intentionally keeps us unsteady. There's an unnatural intensity to Eli Roth's impassioned gaze and Richard Samuel's steely resolve, and when coupled with the rising volume of the music, it signals to the audience they're about to witness something brutal. And well, we all know what happens next. It's an undeniably effective use of the Dutch angle, and Tarantino deserves to be acknowledged for it, but he certainly can't be credited of its invention. For that, we have to return to Germany, and this time, we're going all the way back to World War I. During the First World War, Germany banned the import of foreign works of art. This left the German public in a kind of cultural bubble. While the rest of the world was enjoying the rise of ethereal impressionist art and the humble beginnings of early Hollywood filmmaking, Germany was marching in a decidedly stranger direction. German painters had embraced expressionism in a big way, leaning into the emotionality of art and playing with distorted perspectives. These ideas naturally bled into the filmmaking process and led to now classic movies like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. One of the most important horror films in the development of that genre and a key example of German expressionism in the cinema. Directed by Robert Wiener, with cinematography by Willy Haymeister, the 1920 silent horror film wears its influences boldly and proudly on the sleeve of its dark black trench coat. The sets are filled with wonky lines meant to unsettle the audience, and the characters are all done up with extreme makeup, buildings are misshapen, streets are incongruous with the rest of the environment, and even the furniture was specifically chosen to create off silhouettes. While Caligari doesn't include a true Dutch angle, the sets themselves provide that disconcerting tilt in perspective which would inspire future filmmakers. F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu, Fritz Lang's Metropolis, Ziga Vertov's Man with a Movie Camera, and even Orson Welles' Citizen Kane all physically offset their cameras for particular moments. Obviously, all of these films would become icons of the industry, which served to make the Dutch Angle a widely recognized and revered filmmaking technique. So yes, despite its name, the Dutch Angle is actually German. How is that an apostrophe? I think you mean an epiphany. While we don't know for sure, it's assumed that the Dutch angle was originally called the Deutsch angle, but years of misspellings and mispronunciations from English speakers left it a little twisted. As you might have noticed from the examples, the earliest uses were found mainly in serious genre films, particularly horror films. But as the technique became more popular, the camera trick broke free of its limiting origins and its full viability as an industry staple became clear. Famously, the 1960s Batman TV show and its spin-off movie made use of Dutch angles whenever the villains were on screen. Each character had their own specific tilt, signifying their crooked intentions and unstable personalities. The shots also gave the show and movie a more fantastical feel, which helped to sell the tone of the universe overall. Good going, Batman! I thought we were dead ducks! Dutch angles are also seen in action movies, and especially anime. Usually, they're employed as a way to showcase the otherworldly abilities of a character or capture a particularly unreal set piece. When used well, these tilted shots get the audience's heart racing in a way a standard shot might not, and they do a better job of letting us know that what we're seeing is supposed to be epic in scope. 
Recent Marvel flicks are known for using Dutch angles, and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies are absolutely full of them. Of course, Raimi got his start in horror with the Evil Dead movies, so it's obvious where his influences came from. And he's not the only one. Tim Burton's directorial style is also heavily steeped in German expressionism, which means he makes frequent use of Dutch angles to highlight the absurdity of his films. They could keep me up all night worrying about you. You watch yourself here. When it comes down to it, a Dutch angle is at its best when used to convey and highlight the abnormal. Whether that abnormality is horrific, comedic, or action-oriented in nature doesn't really matter, because the Dutch angle is as versatile as it is effective, at least in the right hands. Just because a camera trick or filmmaking technique has been used to great success in the past doesn't mean it will always have a similar payoff. You have to understand why it works, otherwise the results can be disastrous. The most poignant example of this is the movie Battlefield Earth, directed by Roger Christian. There must be some mistake. Oh. Home office does not make mistakes. On release, Battlefield Earth was panned for, well, just about everything. John Travolta's bizarre acting choices, the terrible costuming, and the strange story based on a book written by the founder of Scientology didn't make for an Oscar-worthy product. And while the movie can definitely be described as abnormal, the constant use of Dutch angles does nothing to lift it past its embarrassing 3% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. As Roger Ebert put it so deftly and scathingly, the director, Roger Christian, has learned from better films that directors sometimes tilt their cameras, but he has not learned why. Let's not beat around the bush. This is one of the ugliest, the most incomprehensible movies I've ever seen. Instead of heightening the emotion of a scene or single shot, Dutch angles are peppered throughout Battlefield Earth with seemingly no real intention. They're there in close-ups, they're there in wides, and they were there in our nightmares after watching the movie. The overuse of Dutch angles made them completely meaningless. The deeper impact they have in better films was gone, replaced with shallow visual stylization to the point where it became a distraction. If Tarantino used Dutch angles as a tool, Christian used them as a gimmick, and their finished films are a tribute to how important it is to use them sparingly and properly. Though the act of tilting a camera might sound fairly simple, when done well, the Dutch angle can evoke a level of emotion in your audience that other shots cannot. After a hundred years, filmmakers are still finding new ways to use it. It's a time-honored technique that won't be going anywhere anytime soon, so whatever the future of the Dutch angle has in store, we know it too will be terrifying, inspiring, and exciting. And well, that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed it, definitely subscribe to Nerdstalgic and leave us a like, and let us know in the comments which movie do you think has the best Dutch angle.